focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to another special episode of NSE Finmiss Season 6 powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and as always we are here to help you understand the concepts behind personal finance and wealth creation. Our next pit stop is in Pune at the headquarters of Praj Industries, an organization that develops technology-led solutions for a sustainable bioeconomy. Let's take a look. Established in 1983 with the objective of providing cutting-edge solutions to distillery industries, Braj Industries claims to be India's most successful company in the field of bio-based technologies and engineering. What started off as an entrepreneurial venture three decades ago is today working towards making the world a better place. Braj Industries is providing a bouquet of sustainable solutions for bioenergy, high-purity water, critical process equipment, breweries, and industrial waste treatment. Spread across five continents and 75 countries, Praj offers innovative solutions to significantly add value in bioethanol, biodiesel, beauty plants, and related wastewater treatment systems for customers worldwide. This week, NSE Finviz is at Praj Industries campus in Pune to discuss personal finance and wealth creation. I would like to ask the experts the percentage of the investment based on the government policies and RBI, how we need to change our investment portfolio. I am hoping to understand uh, how I can create balanced investment portfolio and uh, also hoping for uh, how I can uh, make uh, investment so that I can uh, uh, get uh, uh, tips related to early retirement planning. I would like to know more from the experts. Financial experts can help individuals like me to improve our investments and strat strategically implement and maintenance of portfolio. So what is the diversified investments are required for individuals like us considering the dynamic market. So this is what we are expecting and we will see how best we can extract from the experts. The young people who are right now earning their income naturally they need to plan how they would like to see their finances getting uh, invested or getting spent for that matter over a period of time. Naturally it is driven by the objective related to financial terms, the way in which they would like to achieve going forward. Fortunately for them, the avenues which are available to invest their funds are multifold. But how to invest, where to invest, why to invest, what kind of terms they should get into, I think they need to plan it properly. Welcome to NSC Finvest Season 6, part by CNBC TV 18, continuing with our journey about investing in yourself, your path to prosperity. Our next pit stop is in Pune at the headquarters of Praj Industries to discuss personal finance and wealth creation. And of course, we have with us two experts to discuss that. Nikhil Khotari and uh, Feroz Aziz join us to give us their insights on the topic of financial planning. And of course, the employees of Praj Industries are here for an exchange of ideas with uh, our guests. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, let's start with the topic of investing in mutual funds. Give us a primer on the options which are available for the folks here when it comes to investing in funds. Okay, so a lot of people believe mutual fund is equities. Uh, but I'll say mutual fund is not equities. It's, an as, it's, a, uh, it's a vehicle to invest in different, different asset classes. So through mutual fund, you can invest in equities. Through mutual fund, you can invest in money market called as a debt instrument. Through mutual fund, you can invest in debt mutual funds. Through mutual fund, you can invest in gold. And in future, you, through mutual fund, you can invest in real estate also. Mm -hmm. So mutual fund is just a vehicle to invest in different, different asset classes. So you, in, when you're investing in mutual fund, first, you need to decide that where I want to invest my money. Do I need this money for a very, very short period of time? Mm -hmm. Maybe say 10 days to one month or two months. Then I invest in something called as liquid funds, which is like a money market instrument. If you have a horizon, say I want to invest for one to three years, something like a fixed deposit, then you invest in debt mutual funds. And if you have a horizon that I want to invest for four or five years and a mix of debt and equity, then you have something called as a balanced fund, which is a mix of debt and equity. And if you want to invest for long term, 
then there's a call of equity mutual fund all right and investing is kind of like going on a diet you have to pick and choose what what you consume to to have you know the desired results so from that perspective when it comes to investing how do you uh, in in a fund how do you gauge the quality of a fund what should be the parameters for someone to look at when they look at you know the the various options which are available to them when it comes to investing in funds what you can do is you can either go to an advisor who can have the potential to see what are the schemes which are schemes which are going to be contemporary for 3 years how do how does anandrathi do it that's what i can describe is that there is a subject called regression which helps you predict the future better than the past hmm. okay not perfectly but has it is called statistical astrology uh, it has it draws trend lines so uh, if you're choosing on the basis of regression then you would be better off hmm. now where do you get access to this information media definitely gives you information which is far far better than doing your homework yourself so you can look at money control you can look at tv18 and get this advice for free or the other alternative is go to money control go to value research and see which are the five star funds because if there are 400 odd funds five star funds would be a very few 50 70 of them if you chose from those uh, that could be another method which is little more static Uh, then being uh, more involved all right and looking at it from the mix perspective as you know the, the amount of options that you have what's the sort of right mix to have uh, when it comes to funds what sort of advice would you give them because uh, a lot of people might be thinking you know should i go for an actively managed fund or should i just go for an index fund active fund is basically where the fund manager takes a call that where to invest in and passive managed fund is basically the fund manager just buys a, a already defined calculated index so he buys stocks exactly what they in the index so here the fund manager do not uses his ability to pick up stocks now uh, the why why passive managed fund are consider uh, better than alter, uh, active managed fund in one parlance which is called as expense ratio so when you have to when you have to buy a passive managed fund the expense ratio the the management fee is lower than the active managed fund because here the fund manager is not using his own expertise he is just buying the index but if i look at from india's parlance okay if i look at last 15 20 years the, the after paying the sm- slightly ex- more expense ratio the fund manager is able to beat the benchmark so because here the the information asymmetric is slightly higher than, than as compared to developed markets so fund manager after doing his research after do- having a good amount of team after analyzing stocks they are able to pick up stocks which are slightly bet- maybe maybe outperforming the index so in a in a if you look in last 15 years the active managed fund if, if i take a longer time frame they have outperformed the passive managed fund welcome back to nse finviz season 6 part by cnbc tv 18 we are at the headquarters of praj industries here in pune and uh, let's get uh, right to our topic of this episode which is investing in equities the risks versus the long term benefits so let's start with gauging risk how do folks gauge the amount of risk that they are comfortable with and also gauge the risk which say a particular fr- fund uh, brings to the table so uh, let me first explain what exactly what do you mean by risk so risk basically mean what you expect and what actually happen there will be difference now if the difference is higher we say it's a higher risk if the difference is lower we say it's a lower risk so when we talk about fds what we expect is that we'll get say 8% and we get 8% so there's no risk in that when we talk about e- risk in equity i expect 12% i may get 15% also or i may get minus 5% also so that's what we mean by risk now what happens in risk in that in the short period of time right the when you're investing in equities the risk is higher basically because markets in the short term are far more volatile right so if your expectation is that you will get 12% year on year right so it may say happen that you may get 15% the first year minus 5% in the second year and so on and so forth but as you increase your time frame right if you look at as firuz rightly say that if you have a 10 year time frame then the risk in equity keeps on coming down because in a 10 year time frame at at some time you'll get higher return than 12% and sometime you'll get lower than 12% and on an average you'll end up what we expect so risk all depends on your time frame if you have very very short time frame you need to invest in lower risk asset if you have a longer time frame then only can look at higher risk risky assets speaking of risk when we look at debt funds it's relatively less 
uh, risk prone versus equity funds but uh, recently you know you've got lots of news coming in which are, which has made a pe- lot of people wonder about you know the prospects when it comes to debt funds so anything you'd like to clarify on that point on on you know the risk factor when it comes to debt debt funds so uh, specifically talking about debt funds uh, so debt funds carry two types of risk uh, one is called as the interest rate risk hmm. that if rbi increases the interest rate the bond price comes down right so that's one type of risk called as duration risk and the second risk which debt fund carries is called as credit risk so what does debt fund does is that they take money from you and they go and lend to corporates so if you are given money for 5 year and i take a paper which is of 10 years and if rbi increases the interest rate my bond price comes down so that's one risk which i carry that my my uh, uh, the in amount which i bought the bond maybe is lower right now the second primary which is the recent phenomenon is called as credit risk is that i lend the money to a corporate now the corporate either is, is is now not able to refund back my money so when i get when i lend money to someone he has to repay back money to me that's that's a risk so that's called as credit risk how do you manage interest rate risk you you invest in a fund which exactly uh, invest in paper which are in, in with your time frame so if you want to invest for one year or two year select a fund which also invest in one to two year paper so then you manage your interest rate risk so how do you manage credit risk is is there is that you invest in funds which are got a very very high quality papers so which invest in triple a double a plus papers and if you want to take a credit risk when you take a credit risk you get a higher interest also hmm. then you can select fund which are single a double a and so on and so forth so basically you have to look at both the factors match your investment horizon with the fund uh, average maturity hmm. that will ma- how you manage your interest rate risk on the credit risk select paper which are slightly good quality papers which are triple a and above triple a and equivalent you in, you invest in those funds and on that note i guess we could take a few questions from the audience on this topic that we have been discussing on investing in equities the long term benefits versus the risk so i'll be calling out a few names sandeep bhale rao if you could get up you know every business uh, or every industry has a business cycle and uh, 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 you know when we invest we see that uh, there are opportunities when we uh, when the industries are going we invest during that time but uh, you know uh, how will we come to know what is that business cycle when the industry will go down and when should i exit from my investment so the exit time from the investment how to identify that is the question so if you are if you are doing a direct stock investing right so you look at both the things one is the industry how the industry is shaping up and how the in, individual companies are shaping up right and then that's why you need to do detailed research on how the industry is playing how the stock is behaving how the company is behaving and based on that what's that change in the trend and then you have to uh, you have to get in or get out from the stock so when it comes to direct stock investing the amount of effort which will be far higher when it comes to if you want to if you don't want to do that whole task and want to outsource this work then you can invest in a diversified equity fund so in a diversified equity fund there's a fund manager who 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 have a team of say 20 to 40 analyst and every analyst looks after one sector so there will be a pharma analyst there will be it analyst there will be fmcg analyst so then they look at broader picture and then say what is the trend from the overall industry perspective which in which sectors like to do better and accordingly they will increase their weight in that sector and decrease the weight in other sector all right thank you so thank much you. for asking your question and uh, on that note we'll take another short break when we return the floor will be open to the employees here at praj industries to ask any questions that they have to our financial planning experts uh, and of course stay tuned and you can stay updated with us on our website nscfinvis.com and of course connect with us on our facebook and twitter handles at @nscfinvis we'll be right back stay tuned Welcome back to NSE Finvis Season Six, powered by CNBC TV. Eighteen. Time now to open the f- uh, floor to the audience uh, to ask any questions that they have to our financial planning experts. So let's see a show of hands. Who has a question to ask for our experts? Uh, you, sir. Uh, in financial planning, uh, when I have discussed, say people say that what goals you have. So if it's a goal of five years, and if it's a goal of say fifteen years, then the strategy will be different. Mm. But uh, we know everybody in that uh, the market we cannot predict hmm. so how say because i don't have that knowledge of market or whatever so i believe on somebody hmm. and he takes care of my investment so hmm. and he tells me okay if 5 year is your short term goal then 
do in this this like banking now for for three years in banking then change i'll switch over so mm. those things are done by the fund manager okay. who are manages your fund okay but if nobody can tell mm. what market is going to be mm. then how these decisions i should believe that the, those decisions fair are going point, to fetch point. me the results what i expect or maximize the result okay uh, firoz you want to take this how sure. exactly <laughs> to go about it of course what happens is firstly you have to be clear who is a fund manager who is a wealth manager so that nomenclature has to be very clear fund manager is that person who manages the money inside a mutual fund what you might be referring to is a wealth manager so that we have clarity and once you have clarity then you can define their roles and then see their capability to do that role right so wealth manager's job is to give you a strategy to achieve your objective and the strategy has to be in my opinion if you have to look at strategy your strategy will have one element is what is my asset allocation right kitna equity mein jayega kitna debt mein jayega kitna gold mein jayega agar che jayega so that's one element of strategy so whenever you are taking a piece of advice you will have to categorize it into what component of strategy it is right if it is an asset allocation strategy saying that yaar because you are a five year uh, goal you have a five year goal i'm putting 70% in debt now that's an asset allocation advice he or she is giving you right so that's a very important piece of advice and then you will have to ask for the rational of why you're saying so and there you will have to do your own home, own homework so this will require intense involvement from your side as well once you put the strategy then you don't have to worry saying that these are the things i do these are the things i don't do then the wealth manager should know otherwise he will keep giving you products after product which might be a wrong strategy thank you so much for asking a question let's see some hands there i am dilip bagde uh, working as a senior gm in engineering my question is related to the mutual fund sips okay last 10 to 15 years i am uh, investing in sips right all uh, class that uh, large cap small cap mid cap diversified okay but uh, last 3 4 years the small and mid cap uh, equities they were giving me a very good return around 20 to 25% okay but in the falling market they have taken a very big hit right and they are giving a single digit now okay so my question is uh, whether to invest in small and mid cap is a wrong decision with respect to the diversified and large cap so in last one year broadly the mid and small cap would have fallen by 20% mid cap would fall by 15% and large cap would be either flat or up by 3 to 4%, right? So based on that, your obviously the fund performance has changed over a period of time. But if you have a long horizon, right? If you are looking for investing in all the three asset from a 15 to 20 year perspective, in a long term small cap fund tend to outperform the mid cap fund and mid cap fund tend to outperform the large cap fund from a pure return perspective. But obviously the volatility will be higher in small cap as compared to mid cap and compared to large cap. So the idea is that when you're investing in this three category of fund, first we have a long, longer horizon, right? And from a volatility perspective, the small cap and mid cap will be more volatile than a large cap fund. But again, if you have a very short period of time, if you're looking at next three to five year perspective, three to four year perspective, then I'll say that obviously you need to manage your risk. You need to decide your asset allocation. If you're uh, then again, you have to de- so that how how much of your hundred rupee is invested in various bucket. So if you're out of hundred rupees, sixty seventy percent is in mid and small cap, then you need to change your asset allocation. If you have a very short period of time. But if you still have a 15 to 20 year time frame and you are willing to bear the volatility and have patience to stay invested, then I'm saying this small and mid cap fund should be able to outperform the large cap fund if you have a longer time frame. But again, you need to divide your money across various bucket. You need to see how much you, uh, you can you need to invest in large cap, mid and small cap. But again, as I told you, when you're investing in this three fund, the volatility will always be higher in mid and small cap fund as compared to large cap fund. Times up on this episode. Uh, it's been an interesting exchange of ideas, and of course, the topic has been on investing in equities, risks versus long-term benefits. I'd like to thank the audience here for asking the questions, and of course, to our financial planning experts for answering them. And uh, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Remember, you can stay updated with us uh, at nsefinvis.com, and of course, connect with us on our Facebook and Twitter handles at nsefinvis. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another episode. Yeah, basically, the today's event is really very informative, and basically, it becomes an eye opener for me. So earlier, I don't uh, used to do uh, investment for a long term, but now I realize it is really required to have a long term investment, and also it gives me a proper insight 
to choose the proper investment uh, tool wherein I can get up uh, good uh, results. First, I was uh, making some, uh, uh, saving my money in uh, uh, accounts like uh, in a banks. But after uh, this session, uh, I would definitely try to invest my money in mutual funds as well as some equity markets. I have been investing for quite some years now, whether it is the equity or the debt market. I had never understood the Altman number or the Z factor, which was very new. Uh, ratings or crisis ratings were not new. So uh, the one major change I would st uh, start doing is changing from just an investment to a wealth creation portfolio based now on the Z factor. So it would give me more of uh, a conscious decision choice and option. Focus, ideate, innovate, enable.